Yeah, and I Tom, think he has like a Tom. knife that he's uh, using to, anyway. I love you, but everything you've described is the stuff I read obsessively. Hello! So today we are going to talk about the DC comic series that we most want to see turned into a TV show. Uh, I am here with Tom and Nina to talk about this, and uh, my pick is a fairly obscure comic book that I am 99% certain neither of you have ever heard of, and it is called Major Bummer. Anyone? Anyone? Not. Okay. You're correct that I am not familiar. Now, the reason I'm sure of this is because it was canceled after 15 issues. Oh, okay. <laughs> it came out in, it came out in 1997. Tracks. Yeah. And it lasted for a little over a year. Uh, but the pedigree is solid. It was written by John Arcudi and penciled by Doug Monk, who are the duo behind The Mask, the original Mask comics that the movie was based wow. on. So they're like real deal comic book, like big deal guys. So these aliens are in college, right? And part of their, their thesis project is to give random people superpowers and see what happens. Only they, you know, they research the people and they it's want weird. to give this person. I had the same person. thesis project. Oh, really? How'd yeah. you do? Not great. <laughs> Not great. I think Nina and I just made the same face the whole time that you were describing that. <laughs> it's very, it's very concerned. Yeah. It's a comedy. It's not a serious comic book. It is a. It yeah. is filled with jokes and gags and japes and hilarity. No, I know. It's hard to believe. So one of the aliens who's sending out the superpower machines doesn't realize that the phone book lists names backwards and so sends it to the wrong person. This guy, this slacker, Lou Martin, gets superpowers and gets super duper buff. And throughout the entire run of the comic book series, which again, only lasts 15 issues, he's basically completely uninterested in doing anything heroic anything at all. There's a super team that wants him to join. He's just like, yeah, no thanks. I would really rather play video games and eat a sandwich. And so he's Ralph Boner. He's Ralph Boner. Don't exactly. speak that name in this house. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to bring up such an unpleasant memory for you. Major Bummer was 1997 and uh, it's got very heavy Generation X vibes of like, you know, what if a slacker got superpowers? And I know that like, it's kind mm -hmm. of a silly lame sounding log line, but at the end of the day, you know, having, giving irresponsible people superpowers is probably one of the most used tropes in all of these yeah. superhero movies and TV shows that we actually really like. And so if they kind of committed to it and went all in on it and just had a pretty decent budget, it could be really, really fun. And really I could fun. dig that. Yeah. I Therefore. think it would be really great. Yeah. Um, I don't have any hope for it because again, 15 issues. No yeah. one remembers it, but maybe me. Um, and then beyond that, there's not a super great track record for comic book shows and mo and comic book shows specifically that are specifically humorous. So like mm -hmm. The Tick, The Tick has had tons of TV shows and they've all gotten canceled too early. Mm -hmm. um, and The Tick is amazing. I love The Tick. And it's yeah. just one of those things where for some reason you can have comedy in your superheroes, but you can't have your superheroes be a comedy. So that's that's my pick, and I'm not holding out any hope that it'll ever happen. I like it though, and I, I think you sold it. it well. Where it's Thank like, you, like yeah, make it funny. Have yeah. have some levity about this, right? I mean, yeah. that's why people like Marvel movies in the first place is because they had some levity to them. Have your so. hero never learn anything and never right. want to learn anything. That's right. the premise. I love it, and it's it's, it's wonderful. Like Dan Harmon wrote an MCU story. No, it's got yeah. all the component parts of a, of yeah. a movie. It's got the flawed hero, yeah. just like minus the uh, learning. If you mm -hmm. got the right people involved, it could be really amazing. So yeah, you know, and, and you you mentioned Dan Harmon. It, there's definitely a lot going on in Rick and Morty that I think probably, again, I don't think it's a direct line, but I would say that maybe it's in the air. Maybe somehow the things that influence mm -hmm. Major Bummer also then went on to influence Rick and Morty in the same way. It's just, it was ahead gotcha. of its time. It was a beautiful flower that nobody, nobody but me decided to smell. <laughs> years and years totally later, my uh, collection only had issues two through 15. And years later I bought issue number one on eBay for a few bucks. And I was like, you finally it. it's mine. And meanwhile, it was like, <laughs> it was like an $8 purchase. Like it's not rare. It's just that nobody right. like, no one cares. Right. <laughs> But Honest it's great. Death, those were always my favorite comics. I, yeah. I, I had every Alpha Flight for whatever it's worth. Like You are weirdly the, obsessed the with Alpha ones. Flight. 
I, you know what? If you ever want to do a full, like, let's say three and a half hour video essay on Alpha Flight, I am there for it. I'm 100% mm. down. Can we put a I'm little name tag under him that says, Tom weirdly obsessed with Alpha Flight for the remainder of the video? I'd like that very much. Okay. Now everyone so, knows. Yeah. <laughs> they spelled my name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Nina, what's your pick for the, uh, the DC comic story that you want to see turn into a TV show? I typically prefer Marvel because of the aforementioned levity and comedy that they go for more so than DC. I mean, Shazam was one of the more fun DC movies. I thought Birds of Prey was a lot of fun, stuff like that. But I also love uh, the HBO adaptation. I know Watchmen, you know, kind of... Watchmen is DC, yes? Watchmen is... Yeah. Watchmen is DC, and now it's more DC than it ever was. Yeah, yeah, I I, I feel like, yeah. Yeah, for a long time, it was separate and apart from DC. It was... um, that's a brief, what I thought. Brief Watchmen history lesson. Yes, uh, please. All the Watchmen characters are based on Charlton Comics characters that mm-hmm. DC had acquired and planned to use. So Alan Moore wanted yeah, those stuff. Alan Moore wanted to use all of these characters, and DC said, "No, we have plans for Blue Beetle. Make him Night Owl instead." Mm-hmm. So he did. This that is why we pay you the big bucks, Brian. I but know no, some so- things. I loved the <laughs> HBO adaptation of Watchmen, as I suspect we all did, and you mm-hmm. know, pretty much everybody did. So yeah. I kind of went hunting for something else that I thought could make a cool mini series that was a little on the darker side, and mm. I came across the 1996 series written by Mark Wade and Alex Ross um, called Kingdom Come. Are you Kingdom familiar? Come? Yeah, Ooh. yeah, <laughs> that's um, so good. Yeah. Oh, and I'm so mad! I, I didn't think of that. That's real bleak. I read a good portion of it. Um, it's also a beautiful comic. Alex Ross, baby. Mm-hmm. I know that you've both seen it, but I'm sending a panel from it anyway. Mm-hmm. It's just like, it was stunning to look at. I kind of, I, I got really wrapped up in reading it to the detriment of, of my work, probably. You know, it, it felt very uh, like current it's as so well, good. because The Boys has been such a big hit as well. And kind of examining mm-hmm. the role of superheroes and whether or not, we can just blindly put our trust in them or if they're taking advantage of the of the like public goodwill i would say that the boys owes almost everything exactly to Kingdom Come. so yeah. i think this would be a really good move for dc to take you know the og justice league you bring the same actors back that's fine and then cast like that ragtag group of of miscreants who just run around murdering everybody so so just to just to briefly recap what the premise of kingdom come is yeah. Um, basically, it's it's the future, and superheroes just don't care about mm-hmm. kind of collateral damage. They're just mm-hmm. there's just superpower beings, and they're fighting all the time, and they call themselves superheroes, but they're mostly just superpowered. And they're led by Magog, people. right? Who will just murder with impunity, and everyone right. and everyone's rallying behind him. Which <clears throat> the Justice League is like, why? Why is this acceptable? Right, and most, but most of the Justice League is retired by this. Point. Right, they've. It, yeah. I think is super, Superman's living on a farm, right? And mm-hmm. Diana's back. Uh, yeah, she's back. She's on, in Themyscira. Thank you for pronouncing it. Uh, yeah. yeah, and and so they've they've scattered to their ends of the earth, and then yeah. this. It's kind of this beautiful retirement story for a bunch of them. Like Flash yeah. is just existing like too fast. Mm-hmm. It also felt very um, like kind of modern, even though it was written in the 90s, where it's like during a fight with two superheroes, one of them gets, uh, I believe it is, it's Captain Adam gets yanked apart and Mm -hmm. it gives the entire American Midwest radiation poisoning. (laughs) Yeah. Which is like funny when you say it and then it's also so upsetting. Right. Right. So yeah, I I mean Brian, you probably have much more to explain about this than, than my, you know, I've read about half the issues, but What's great about it is it's basically this story of what does it mean to be a hero? What does it mean to have mm-hmm. power? And it's 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 Superman, basically Batman kind of wrangles Superman and other people out of retirement, if I'm remembering mm-hmm. all the details correctly. Maybe I've correct, got some. Yeah. Um, and basically the idea is just kind of like the older heroes kind of coming after the newer heroes to try to say, mm-hmm. hey, stop it. You can't do this. You can't, you can't, you're tearing the world apart and here's why yeah. and here's how. And, it's such a pretty story. We got it's, Shazam, yeah. Captain Marvel, back when they could call him Captain Marvel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fighting yeah. Superman. And that fight scene is honestly one of the most exciting. It's like, it's so, you the haven't gotten there yet. Drew that. You got to get to the end. You got to finish this yeah. thing. It's so I'm going good. To. So, yeah. Oh my God, what a pick. You know what I'm going to do after the call today? 
I'm going to read Kingdom Come. I love so it. I'm super such, excited. It's such I've a great story. I've inspired you. Yeah, That's and such I just a think great pick. I think on like a network like HBO that could give it a oh budget God. and a really good director, oh. it could be amazing. It would be amazing. And I feel like HBO is the perfect place because I feel like they wouldn't over float the story and make it mm -hmm. be like 13 or 14 episodes. They'd mm -hmm. let it be like five, maybe six. Mm -hmm. um, but I, yeah, I, I want I want a dark Kingdom Come adaptation. Yeah. Cause it's all, but it's ultimately a story of hope, exactly. and that's the thing. Yeah, because it's it's all about these these the, the value of having values. Oh, I feel like such a cheesy, corny loser, but yeah. No, and the problem is, I just want Damon <laughs> Lindelof to direct it too. But I also understand yeah. he can't do everything. <laughs> he can't do everything, but he's definitely proven himself. Yeah. Uh, with uh, with Watch when when that Watchmen show was announced, I looked at the trailer and I was like, "What? Yeah, really? Are you sure?" Um, yeah. Because I am not a big fan of the Watchmen movie from our friend Zack Snyder. I wasn't uh, we aware that anyone was, but yeah, go on. There are people who like that movie, and I will not say that they are wrong to like You're it. You're right. I will, Everyone is I will allowed say, to feel that way. It's not for me. It's not for me. And maybe some other day we'll talk about why. But Damien mm -hmm. Lindelof, Damon, excuse, Damon Lindelof, mm -hmm. uh, definitely did an amazing job with Watchmen, and he yeah. put all my fears to rest, so... Yeah, that's yeah. a great pick, Nina. Oh my god! Thank you. I impressed the comics king. I am. I'm retired. <laughs> it's a great idea. You Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Nina. I'm gonna George Costanza uh, this. I'm out. <laughs> Nina turned into stardust. And yeah. uh, so, Tom, what's your pick? I present to you my pitch. Consider for a moment the fact that by their very nature, television adaptations, and keeping in mind that uh, I, I loved Watchmen, I thought Watchmen was terribly impressive. I also love a lot of the, the kind of uh, lower budget, the really beautiful, brilliant TV adaptations that we've seen in the last few years, like Doom Patrol, I think is mm -hmm. kind of gorgeous in its own unique way. There's some great DC television content out there, so I don't mean to disparage that. However, Television adaptations do come with a uh, uh, sort of a pre-established trashiness, right? Yes. Like yeah. either visually, like in terms of the special effects, or in terms of the writing, sometimes both. Can we yeah. agree on that? Yes. I agree. I agree. That said, the last few years, television has kind of shifted a little bit and turned into, uh, at least in some places, uh, like think pieces and... and, and uh, really clever narratives like, like true detective and and like watchmen uh and uh overall just these things that i'm not smart enough to understand <laughs> so i think that the best possible television adaptation would be something that combines these three things terrible visuals not great writing and i don't understand it which is why i think that the best tv dc adaptation would be every comic the DC put out in the nineties. <laughs> Think so. Here's uh, I've, I've, I've got like a whole list of stuff that would work perfectly for this. So like uh, you've got uh, red and blue Superman, like both sure. of them looking sort of like butt. And I don't, I still <laughs> don't get what happened. Superman dies, and like half of the panels are just dedicated to trying to advertise these new characters that nobody mm. cares about. With names that I don't even remember anymore, uh, uh, Azrael taking over as Batman. Mm -hmm. uh, Batman becomes a French guy uh, with Ooh. too many spikes on his body. Then we've got uh, whatever Eradicator was, because I'm uh, again still not clear on that. Aquaman <laughs> loses a hand and then gets it back, and we don't understand why Nightwing has a mullet and then he cuts it off. Parallax, Doctor Fate in the '90s. I don't know if you guys remember this, but Doctor Fate all of a sudden like abandoned the Hippocratic Oath oh. and uh, just turned into this, like, uh, I don't know if Serious you ever read Grimjack, Tom. but he, he basically turned into Grimjack. Like, he's he's the, he's like he's missing an eye. And I think, he has the onk over like, his eye. Yeah, and I Tom, think he has, like, a Tom, knife that he's uh, using to, anyway. I love you, but everything you've described is the stuff I read obsessively, and I love all of this, and I can probably explain most of it. <laughs> all right well Most let's stop recording and then brian's gonna make me feel better about it if no, you don't I'm understand saying, something you just gotta ask brian i'm just saying okay so i like i really like this idea i like the uh the superman red blue was was ridiculous 
Um, yep. It is a little hard to kind of to work out what exactly happened there, but it also was an homage to a storyline from the 50s where Superman yep. Red and Superman Blue happened. And also another DC comic book from the 90s, Kingdom Come. Uh, Very true. I was going to say, <laughs> and, and also all these JLA comics right here, the oh, Grant Morrison up. JLAs that I love. Yeah. All these Starman comic books that are amazing. Mm. Grant Morrison has always been kind of a, kind of a, what do you call it? Lighthouse in a foggy ocean. Well, but Starman was James Robinson. I stand corrected. I'm sorry, Tom. No, I'm, I'm sorry, a fool. Tom. All I'm saying is that like, it, <laughs> did you guys watch the, uh, the, the crisis on infinite earths special that they did with the Arrowverse last? I did oh, not, but I'm, ago? I'm aware of it. Yeah. I, I've seen the name. It feels like if Terry Gilliam had like sneezed a movie into existence, like kind of accidentally. It's it's not. It's Ooh, rough. It's that's real rough. Bone chilling. <laughs> and I feel like the quality of that, like mixed with the the kind of absent uh, consciousness, I, I I feel like that could have made a wonderful television series. Just nothing makes sense, and everything looks like crap. Here's what I think is happening. I think you're picking up on the fact that DC Comics, more than Marvel, um, has had a more difficult relationship with its uh, continuity, basically. Yeah. Right? In, sure. in the late 80s, the Crisis on Infinite Earths, the thing that you mentioned, was basically there. So, so, so way back in the 40s, we have Superman, we have Batman, we have The Flash, we have Green Lantern, we have Wonder Woman, we have all these characters. Mm -hmm. And then... They go away for a while, and then in the the, the late fifties, I want to say late fifties, early sixties, they bring them back, a lot mm -hmm. of them, but new versions of them. You've got a new Flash, you got a new Green Lantern, you've got Wonder Woman, but started over. You've got new versions of old characters' names, like the Atom, right? Like in the Golden mm -hmm. Age, the Atom was just a short guy, but in the Silver Age, he could actually shrink. So wait, is that real? Yes, Adam was just a small a small man. He was just really small. He had a blue a blue mask that covered his whole face and a cape and like a, a weightlifting belt. And he just ran around punching Nazis and other crooks and, and yeggs and, and henchmen and things. So what happens wow. is over time, DC Comics has all of these different continuities that is just confusing. So the Silver Age heroes are these different versions of the Golden Age heroes. And so like, how do we reconcile this? They live on parallel Earths. So eventually you have Earth-1, Earth-2, Earth-X, Earth, I don't know. It just goes on and on and on. And then as DC Comics acquires different comic book characters like Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. Which was um, published by Fawcett Comics. Fawcett. And then all the Charlton Comics characters that we talked about earlier that were going to be the Watchmen characters. Um, they were all existing on separate Earths. And so in order to clean it up and make it seem a little bit more streamlined, they did Crisis on Infinite Earths. Bunch of characters died, and eventually they were just like, okay, here's when everything started. Everything's on the same Earth. This is so how So that was just a house cleaning exercise. That's all it was. And that's all it ever and was. It they was this kept doing it like every 10 and then years they for the rest doing of the yeah. Yes, and that's the problem because then in the 90s, they did zero hour. And then uh -huh. a bunch of years later, they did uh, the new 52, which was when yep. I, shortly after the new 52, I hopped off because I just couldn't keep up anymore. Um, but yeah, that's that's been more of DC's thing. Marvel hasn't done that quite as much, but they have been doing it too because our favorite character, Miles Morales, right? He's an awesome addition to the Spider-Man universe. He started out as the second Ultimate Spider-Man on the Ultimate Universe, and then he got mm -hmm. folded into the mainline Marvel Universe yeah. during the recent, I want to say, Secret War. I think they recycled the old Secret War name. I think it was, yeah. Think, I'm yeah. getting way off track here, but what you're picking up on is the fact that in the 90s, DC Comics was very crazy, and a lot of weird stuff happened in an, in, in an effort to try to do new and interesting things, and they kept throwing weird ideas out, like the death of Superman, the new mm -hmm. Batman, John Paul, John mm -hmm. Paul, I don't remember. Godier. John Paul Valley. Was his okay. was his name, and he was not Asriel, and he became Batman. I think, I think I'm babbling. Not at all. No. I think I mostly read comic books instead of doing homework in high school, and that's everything I've well, just. Well, to Brian's vomited. teachers watching this, now you know. 
Yeah, if Miss Chevrier from All Saints Private School in the fourth <laughs> grade, like I'm going to say about 1996 or circa that point, uh, ever sees this, I never mind. I don't have anything polite to say. <laughs> Change my mind. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe so you don't miss a single video.